Всем привет! С вами Зак Новак на радиостанции Новоруссия Рокс. Welcome to Novorussia Rocks Radio Station. This is Zach Novak, your American in downtown Donetsk. The program is called Project Guru, and Guru is in the house as always. Andre, my engineer. Let's get right to it. War crimes. As now, the Poroshenko junta regime targets our industrial industries with heavy caliber shelling. The Nazi Ukrainian hostile side used a heavy artillery of 122 millimeter caliber and targeted Zysetko coal mine in the Kievsky district, according to our defense ministry. At about 10.20 p.m. last night, the mining area Zysetko mine was targeted. According to preliminary data, several shells landed in the coal mining area of the mine. There was no information on wounded or destruction at this time. Be reminded that the contact group on the peaceful regulation agreed on a ceasefire in Donbass since midnight, 31st of August. War crimes by the Ukraine junta continues. The Obama regime abandons the no first use policy for nuclear strikes. Guru, listen to this. Though it has been over 70 years since the United States last used nuclear weapons in an offensive manner during a war, U.S. governments have continued to retain some deliberate ambiguity on their policy toward the future use of such weapons. Though there was considerable speculation that would change, President Obama is now believed to have abandoned any plans for a no first use statement with respect to America's massive nuclear arsenal, facing too much opposition from the rest of the administration and giving up on the idea pretty much quickly. At present, China and India are the only two nations with a well-established no first use policy. North Korea has hinted at a similar position, though somewhat nebulously. And the Soviet Union also had such a position, though Russia does not retain that policy, saying it might use nuclear weapons in a defense against overwhelming conventional attack. NATO, terrorist NATO organization as an alliance, has historically rejected a no first use policy, though Obama was seen to be in favor of it as part of a general support of arms reduction. Secretary of Defense Ash Carter was said to have told Obama that such a statement would be seen as a sign of weakness. Secretary of State John Kerry is also said to be opposed to such a statement, believing America's nuclear deterrent would be weakened if it was committed to only being used in a retaliatory manner. Kerry is said to have cited China's expansion of South China Sea as a reason to not make such a statement. Indeed, it appears few advisors favored such a move, and Obama abandoned the matter quickly in the face of such opposition. Neither Hillary Clinton nor Donald Trump is believed to be in favor of similar measure, and the matter will likely be dropped entirely as the elections nears. Croatia fascist regime economic losses due to sanctions against Russia. The economic losses sustained by Croatia as a result of the introduction of sanctions against Russia are estimated at about 300 million euros, that's $334 million at the current exchange rates, Russian ambassador to Croatia Anvar Azimov said. Croatia, Ustashi government is part of the European Union and terrorist NATO and has also introduced sanctions against Russia. It also bears losses. Russia businessmen will not invest in a country that imposes sanctions on us. Because of the decrease in exports, Croatia has lost approximately 300 million euros, according to our estimates, Azimov said in an interview with Croatia Mecerni List newspaper. He added that Russia was ready to buy Croatia's agricultural and pharmaceutical products, as well as cosmetics made in the Balkan state. Ties between Russia and the European Union, including Croatia, suffered a severe blow after Crimea became part of Russia in 2014 and the West accused Moscow of meddling in the conflict in eastern Ukraine, imposing political and economic sanctions on Russia. The Kremlin has repeatedly refuted the accusations and introduced countermeasures, banning a list of EU products. If elected and commander-in-chief, Trump will give senior military leaders 30 days to wipe out ISIS. U.S. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump said that as commander-in-chief, he would give senior military leaders a 30-day deadline to come up with a plan to swiftly defeat Daesh. 
which is ISIS. I'm going to convene my tough generals and give them a simple instruction. They will have 30 days to submit to the Oval Office a plan for soundly and quickly defeating ISIS, Trump told a rally in Greenville, North Carolina. We have no choice. Earlier in the day, 88 U.S. generals and admirals endorsed Trump for the U.S. presidency over his opponent, Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton. Trump praised his military supporters as veteran warriors and combat veterans. These are the warriors, not the political hacks who endorsed Hillary Clinton a few, two or three weeks ago. Trump also said that if elected, he would call on U.S. Congress to remove the automatic sequester system put into law under current President Barack Obama that mandates automatic spending cuts on the U.S. armed forces. Assad forces the Syrian army and air force destroying Obama-backed terrorists across Syria. Aleppo, a military source said the Syrian Air Force launched morning intensive strikes against gatherings and fortifications of the terrorist organizations in the southern and northern countryside of Aleppo province. The source told Sana that the airstrikes hit targets in Khan Tuman and Maurata in southern countryside of Aleppo, leaving many terrorists dead and a number of armored vehicles destroyed. Terrorist positions were also targeted in Kafir, Hamra, and Haitan in the northern countryside where a number of terrorists were killed and their vehicles and ammunitions destroyed. In Idlib, the Syrian Air Force destroyed 10 armored vehicles and ammunition depots during sorties. It carried out against gatherings and fortifications of terrorists from the so-called Jaish al-Fatah in Idlib. The army airstrikes hit terrorist positions in El Tamania town in the southern countryside of Idlib province, destroying a number of ammunition depots and workshops for preparing car bombs. The Air Force also targeted gatherings of terrorists and their vehicles in the towns of Abul, Al-Duhar, and Binesh, leaving 10 armored vehicles destroyed and a number of terrorists dead. In Hama, the Syrian Air Force destroyed three command centers, four armored vehicles, and seven machine gun equipped cars and killed a large number of terrorists in Maradis, Suran, Hafaya, Al-Latmina, Man, Taletzdan, and Orontes River crossing in Hama countryside. In Dara, army units destroyed two command centers for the terrorist organizations in Dara al Balad, killing all members of a terrorist group. Terrorists Basel Aboud and Salal Abu Nahboud were identified among the killed terrorists. Army units also killed all members of a terrorist group in Darar al Mahata. Viva Saad, Viva Syrian Army. Guru Andre, excellent news for our cosmonauts, astronauts, all systems go as Soyuz TMA-20M with crew lands in Kazakhstan. The Soyuz TMA-20 spacecraft carrying three crew members of the International Space Station ISS has landed in Kazakhstan. The Mission Control Center in the Moscow region said on Wednesday, search and rescue groups have set off to the place of landing. They will evacuate the crew members from the capsule, in particular Russian cosmonauts Alexei Ovchinin and Oleg Skrifochka and U.S. astronaut Jeffrey Williams. Ovchinin, Skrifochka and Williams went to the orbit on March 19 and spent 172 days in space. Space. This was the first space flight for Ovchinin, second for Skifichka, and fourth for Williams. Until the next Suez comes, Russian cosmonaut Anatoly Ivanishin, Japanese astronaut Takuya Onishi, and U.S. astronaut Kathleen Rubens will stay on the ISS. The next Soyuz spacecraft will fly to the ISS on September 23rd. It will take Russian cosmonauts Sergei Rizhikov and Andrei Borisenko and U.S. astronaut Robert S. Kimbra to space. Son of a whore, Obama cancels meeting with Philippines President Duterte. While the Philippines government seems to be banking heavily on military treaties with the U.S. as they confront China over maritime disputes, relations between the two nations are starting to show some weakness as President Obama pointedly canceled his planned meeting with his Philippines counterpart, Rodrigo Duterte. The notoriously outspoken Duterte, when asked about the possibility of President Obama bringing up the growing number of extraditional killings by security forces in their war on drugs, went on a 
tirade against the U.S. president, declaring him to be a son of a whore and insisting that he is no American puppet that a U.S. president can question like that. It wasn't clear that Obama even planned on asking about the summer executions, and indeed with the Philippines recently restoring U.S. military access to their soil, the president likely would have tried to avoid any major blow-ups. Instead, the blow-up happened before the talks, and Obama quickly canceled them outright, saying he didn't want to meet if there was nothing productive to discuss. He also warned that if they do meet in the future, he'll definitely bring up the executions now. Duterte, who was elected president back in June, was seen as a law and order candidate who publicly declared his support for vigilantism and summary executions as effective anti-crime measures. He bragged upon his election that allegations of 1,000 killed during his tenure as Davao city mayor would become 100,000 and that he would dump those corpses in Manila Bay. Virtually from the moment of his election, police have begun executing suspected drug dealers and even some users with impunity. Hey everyone, that ends our program. Thank you so much for the support for Nova Russia Rocks Radio Station and Project Guru. As I stress always, be safe out there, be on alert, and see you all on Friday. Bye-bye, folks.